So I would like to welcome everyone to uh, to this session, Creating Happy Engineers, Antidotes from the Trenches by Vivek Ganeshan and Kiran Kashyap. We are glad they can join us today. So without further delay, over to you, uh, Vivek and Kiran. Thank you very much, Devesh. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's a nice evening, and uh, we are happy to be with you in Agile India 2021. And uh, this session is going to be a very short one, and this is going to be about how to, you know, inculcate happiness in engineers or how to keep the engineers happy. Uh, and this is an important topic in uh, the situation that uh, the tech community is in right now. So myself and my friend uh, Kiran are going to touch upon this topic, but we are not going to talk about theories. We are going to talk about three stories from the real world that we have seen, which have created happiness in the developers. So my name is Vivek Ganesan, and I am an Agile and DevOps coach, and also the co-founder of a SaaS startup called Nodesalai. And uh, I have here uh, with me, Mr. Uh, Kiran Kashyap. Um, hi, all. I am Kiran. Um, I'm working as a senior scrum master at Lowe's. So I have co-authored a book uh, with Vivek, and, and, I'm also, uh, and I also write blogs. So yeah, uh, so that's all about me. So uh, today, what we are going to uh, talk about is uh, we'll share uh, three stories which will make uh, developers happy, how we can make uh, the engineers happy. And uh, before that, I'll, I'll just give you a heads up. So this will not be about, you know, how we can keep developers happy by, you know, gifting them power banks, headphones, or, you know, any monetary benefits or giving them t-shirts, trips. So uh, this one will be mostly uh, non-monetary benefits and uh, how we can make developers happy about it. So how we are going to share? So we'll just share three stories with you. And, uh, and yeah, so let's begin. So here's the first story. Uh, the one with the awesome product owner, right? So, uh, so there is a team, right? Uh, let's imagine there is a team and then there is a product owner. It has five de developers and, and they call themselves as Avengers. So what they do is they build a, a SaaS product, B2B. Um, so since I already told this story is about awesome product owner. So, so there was just one problem that uh, product owner was often, you know, uh, having problems with. So whenever he suggests the team, you know, to, uh, you know, to, to get a better user experience for the user. User experience, I mean, not only in terms of the U, UI or UX, also uh, having a better experience for user while using the product. But, but the team were always, um, you know, uh, hesitating that. So, 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 so this product owner doesn't want to sit quiet. So what he did, he, he just started analyzing it. And when he was uh, doing some digging, he found out that these engineers were talking to themselves and uh, bragging that, you know, uh, who built more number of features. So the talk was directly or indirectly about you know, who built maximum number of features. So one, one guy spoke, I have built 10 in last quarter. Another you told we built, I built 15. Another one just kept quiet because, you know, he didn't do much. So even, so this didn't answer him. Why, why, why in the first place, even developers were talking like this, right? So he understood that, you know, there is a big wide screen, uh, which is put on in the common area. And, and, and there uh, the metrics were shown from the team. So all the metrics involved uh, only on number of features. You now, how many number of features we build in Q1, Q2, or it talked about the money, how many money saved. So right, so so the uh, so so this is where the the product owner came up with the idea. So he thought, uh, why not um, you know instead of only monetary, why not you know explain by giving uh, the developer a purpose. So he thought. Let me show them another metric. So all with you no know, the already existing metrics, he retained it. So he added another small change in that metric. What he added was number of hours the user uh, you know got. So for example, uh, you know um, uh, there was a scenario where you know the users were working late and you know they were losing their sleep. So the so because of this feature build. So product owner started collecting the number of hours extra because, you know, because of these features, the users got. And once the developers saw this, they started looking, uh, you know, they were very surprised and happy. So they understood that their product is not just about, 
you know adding feature after feature it's about making someone's life better you know something non non monetary something intangible but still it gives a satisfaction uh, or a purpose so this led to you know uh, uh, developers or engineers themselves you know uh, voluntarily suggesting product owners uh you know asking question how this may lead you know uh, a better user experience or how can this make better uh, life for the users and so the moral of the story the first story is you know a developer with the purpose is a happy developer so let's let's begin with the next story okay so the next story is an interesting story and this is a story with a contest and a winner and a prize and uh, only catch point there is that the prize values at 0 dollars or 0 n or 0 euros or whatever the currency you call so let's get into the story uh, this context is about a startup company and uh, one of the key features of many startup companies at least the saas startups right people are changing their jobs to go into saas startups because of flexible hearts and this was a pre covid time this was not a uh, fully remote kind of a workplace. This startup specifically had uh, an office and uh, they had flexible hearts. So managers did not really care about when an employee comes to office, when they leave out of office. So at least at a level of uh, people thought that they can control their lives in the way they want. There was self-direction and people, as long as goals are met, uh, people can, you know, come and go at any time. That's that's the culture of the startup and it was working very well. And uh, there was a contest, a hackathon in specific, where, you know, uh, the details of the hackathons are irrelevant here, but the hackathon was just one of the events that they conducted. Uh, but there was a winner that emerged out of that hackathon. And when they, when the leadership team saw the winning, winning solution, uh, they thought, oh, this solution is so great that, you know, we have to reward this person greatly. And then they basically went and created a small committee called reward committee. And uh, they said, hey, you know what, we need to reward this person. But the only catch is that there is no budget. We being a startup, we do not want to burn money that much. And uh, we cannot come up with a huge gift for that person. So use your creativity, like every leader says to us, use your creativity and try to find out a way where we can reward this person without spending a dime. And that was the challenge given to this reward committee. And this reward committee uh, was also given autonomy except for that one condition that you should not spend money. They were given full autonomy on whatever they want to try, they can try. And whatever is within the reach of the leadership, they will support them to give that particular reward. Now they went to that person and started interviewing that person. What, how does your day look like at all? And then one of the single point that came as highlight was that this person is always an early comer to office. So he will be seen in the office by 8 a.m. in the morning. And when you ask him, why do you come early in office? Is it because you want to catch up, catch some time before people come in? No, he said, no, no, no. Here we have, I am having a car. I have to come to office by car. And uh, I do not, uh, you know, get a, uh, you know, I do not get space in parking if I come late. So just because I have to get a space in the parking, I have to come early. Uh, and then people ask, okay, would you want it in a different way? Then he said, yeah, if there is a choice, why not? Uh, I would always love to, you know, drop my kids to school and then come to office after that. And uh, that created a thought process. And what people came up with was they gave the one of the parking slots, but they just dropped this name on that and made it a reserved parking slot for that only one person for a quarter. Now, what happened? These people have made this person happy, this particular engineer happy by spending exactly zero rupees, but at the same time, actually giving him value, which is the autonomy. What they gifted him was the autonomy. Now he can come to office whenever he wants. If he wants to come early, he could come early. If he wants to come late, he wants to, he can come late. And he, he also, uh, in, in another, uh, you know, what do you say, company, uh, company, socials kind of an event, he told, given that I have now the resort parking slot, my, you know, bonding with my child has improved. Right. Uh, previously, he was beating himself up, thinking he was not being a good father and all these things. But now he gets time to spend with his uh, child while he's dropping the child off to the school. And that is the cost of autonomy. And you basically gifted him the relatedness to the child. That is the advantage that these people got. So with zero money, people gave him the reward and the reward was autonomy. 
One more thing to note, important thing to note is that it's not just this particular winner got autonomy as the price. The leadership was good enough to give the autonomy to the rewards committee, despite having constraints saying, we will support you, you do your own way. They did not say, okay, do this meeting, get, these are the list of allowed or approved gifts that you can give to this person. They did not, not do that they gave them a free hand and that autonomy actually made the uh, reward committee also feel good about the work that they did when they did that right so this is the second story where you created uh, uh, you know developers happiness using autonomy as a gift instead of just pouring dollars of money or giving him a you know giving him a nice headphones or whatever whatnot right now coming to the third and final story, uh, this is an interesting story because it is about mutant wars and it is also about increasing the quality of the sleep of the developer and increasing the quality of the product that they build. So the context is this, there is a team uh, and uh, this team has 90% code coverage. So they do unit test, the unit test, integration test, acceptance test, the test pyramid, whatever you think about. All technical practices, they claim to do it and they say 90% code coverage. But if you see almost, if not every Saturday, they have some production defect that bites them. And then they, at least, at least one of the members in the team ends up working late in the Saturday so that they can get the bug resolved. And this is not a good place to be in. And when they this came up in a retrospective that this is going to this is happening too too far, and they started questioning about the quality of the tests that they write, right? Then it came to their notice. At least people, when they spoke about it, uh, they found out that they were not writing good meaningful tests because it felt like a chore. It felt like you know a very you know unpleasant activity to do because I am the developer, and if I am writing tests, it's going to be like very unpleasant for me. And people just wrote test cases and they wrote bad test cases. If you are interested, you can go on research. There are always ways to write bad and useless test cases, but still have a hundred percent code coverage. Uh, you know, uh, we even uh, did a talk uh, recently on this subject around how you can get hundred percent code coverage with absolutely ridiculously bad test cases. So you do your research on that, but this was the case with the team. Now, what uh, the question that was posed to the team was how can we make writing the activity of tests engaging? How do you write tests in an engaging way, right? And this is when uh, one of the team members, you know, got introduced to a tool called Striker. Um, this is for the JavaScript stack, of course, but for Java, there is another tool called PyTest. What this does is this, this does something called mutation testing. We are not going to go deeper into this, but this gives you a gamified outlook on how do you write tests. So for every bad test that you write or every bad uh, you know test that you write, you will create a lot of mutants and the striker will expose the mutants to you. And you have to, you as a developer have to kill the mutants in order to improve the quality of your product. So this became a game for people at the end of the day, how many mutants did you kill today, right? Even when they had user stories to work, parallelly they allocated time so that they could kill some mutants on that day and then go back home. So this was, very much like, you know, there was a team goal of, okay, these many mutants we have to kill from the existing code base. And slowly they code, their code base came on track. And after they, they got into a point where, you know, at least the production defects are sort of tapering down, they got into a new mindset of, okay, we will not do fake coverage because it is a bad thing, but we will always be killing mutants where we can actually understand where the, uh, you know, tests are failing and we can write good tests. And also we enjoy doing that as a game among our team members, right? So at the end of the day, what these people did was they were pursuing the value of mastery. How do you write good test cases? How do you become a master in writing clean code or quality code? And how did they do that? They did that by doing mutation tests and that gamified their experience and they basically got too much engaged into it. And they got some happiness out of it because the activity itself was fun as a team activity. And also they got better at it as they went about it, right? These are the end of three stories. In summary, uh, Kiran, can you summarize? So uh, some, maybe many of you might have already got it. So this, this talk was uh, inspired by the book Drive. So where he talks about uh, 
internal motivation so what actually motivates human beings to do great things so he he sort of came into conclusion that these are the three things autonomy mastery and purpose so if if organizations want their developers to be happy and at the same time if they want you know uh, their product and 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 their service also to be better so these are the things they can which they can bring in to their work itself rather than talking about you know work life balance and happiness what if we make work itself happy for developers so this is the best thing anybody can uh, give it, give to a person not only in 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 we in in tech world even in other worlds where there is knowledge work so um, yep so that's all so we can take uh, q and a so anybody any question and while you are uh, looking at questions if you are interested in the work that we are doing uh, if there is something that is relevant for this group we started something called tech coach circle where we you know enable people to become technical agility coaches because that talent is seriously lacking in the community and there are some books that we have out that so please take a look and we are open for questions looking for more ideas uh, if any so uh, the the whole point of developer happiness or the workplace happiness uh, there are two books that you know we both like to re like to uh, you know prescribe to people the one book we already prescribed to you which is the drive another book is called flow uh, which talks about how do you get people involved to the to the level that they forget that passage of time right and how do you create flow state of flow in people so take a look at that and if you you know go through uh, the past conference talks there have been multiple conference talks that have referred uh, these two books and uh, the concept of flow that would be my starting point for developer happiness if you need thank thanks for the feedback everyone yeah.